Hi, welcome back to Tray Tips. I'm Freddie Victoria with FP Victoria and Son, and today we're starting the first of two segments on chairs. Today's segment is going to focus on what goes into making a chair, because we all sit in chairs, but very few people actually know what go into the construction of chairs. So here we have one of our Louis XV style models that you can also find in the Metropolitan Museum. Uh, this one is fully upholstered and finished. Over here, we have a fully finished frame for the same model. And down here, we have fully, fin fully carved parts for the same model that are ready to be assembled. So here we have the 14 basic parts that go into making up a chair. These parts have been hand carved, and if we start down here, you have your front legs, you have your seat, here you have your front seat rail, your side rails, and your back seat rail. Here you have your back legs, here are your arms, and your arm posts, and here you have your seat back, the crest rail, and the lower back rail. As you can see the pieces are left a little bit longer and unfinished uh, and this is to make sure that the joint is done as precisely as possible. The two pieces are taken, the final cut is made and they're, they're joined together and then the uh, recarver comes in and continues the carve between the two, carving between the two pieces so that you have a smooth uh, well blended carving. Uh, in the 18th century, the pieces used to be joined with a mortise and tenon peg joint. Two pieces would slip together and then be pegged. Today, we use dowels because we have much better glue, so the two pieces are doweled together and then glued. Uh, however, if a client wants an authentic 18th century look, you can simulate the, uh, the mortise and tenon peg, which we've done here, but you don't see in the unfinished part. Finally, we just want to cover some of the basic measurements that make a chair comfortable. Everyone's familiar with the overall dimensions, certainly, and you also have the seat width, the seat depth rather, here you have the seat width and the seat height. But perhaps the most important measurement for a chair's comfortability is the pitch. The pitch of the back is the angle of the back relative to the seat, and it's probably the most overlooked measurement around but it's the most important for a comfortable chair. So the way we measure that is by dropping a weighted line from the crest rail and measuring out from the back seat rail where that line hits. This chair has a pitch of 8 inches. This is a lounge chair, so you would expect it to have a greater pitch for comfortability, whereas if it were a dining chair, it would have less of a pitch because you want to be a little bit more upright at a dining table. So this covers your basics of chair construction. Uh, we hope you found it useful. In our next segment, we'll cover some of the uh, basics of 18th century French-style chairs. Thank you very much, and we hope to see you again.